My guest at this time is the new president of SWE. It is Lacey Von Eric. Lacey, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me here today. Yeah, no problem. Um, life has been really crazy and really busy. Um, I had uh, my kid's teacher this morning. She said, um, you know, Trip was saying a lot of big changes are happening in your house. That's my middle child. Um, is there? And I go, no, not really. And I was like, oh, wait, I, I, yeah, I, I own a wrestling federation now. And he has to come out with me like once a month to different locations. And she goes, yeah, that's a big change. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a really big change in my life. Um, I've owned several companies, um, but always very accounting and math driven, <laughs> like, you know, medical billing and um, an advertising company where I was the CFO and things like that. So I'm definitely coming into SWE to reorganize the back office and business side of things. Um, and then I, right when I bought it, I got accepted into Harvard Business School. What? Um, yeah. And which is, this is kind of where I study every day. Um, I didn't know this was a uh, a video interview. I thought it was a radio interview. So I, that's why I don't look like Lacey Von Eric. I look like Lacey Blindbury, Harvard student. <laughs> you look great, Lacey. Honestly, okay. like don't, don't, don't stress about it at all. Wait, Harvard <laughs> business. That's incredible, Lacey. You're going to know, Harvard I, business school. I didn't know I would get in. I mean, honestly, if I did, I would have like waited for the acceptance and thought about like whether I'm going to own a big company when I'm doing this right now. But it's really helping me a lot. I just actually um, did a really big seminar and had to write a couple papers on like an entrepreneur that you admire. So I had to like study up on entrepreneurs and things like that. And it's put a lot of things in perspective that I'm going to implement into SWE Fury, which I'm really excited about. So it's actually working out really well. It's helping me develop my mind, which will help develop SWE. Wow. Okay. So why did you yeah. decide now is the time to make this investment? And you say your owner, so you, you bought the whole company. I was a little confused. But I exactly. didn't buy the whole company. I bought a big chunk of it. Got it. <laughs> um, the rest of the, uh, the company is owned by Tom Lance, um, my business partner and good friend. So um, yeah, so he, he owns the rest of it. And then I just do, you know, the business side of things and he helps promote and do the wrestling stuff. Okay. So why why did you feel now was the time to buy buy into SWE? What what made you want to make this leap? Well, okay. So I went out because they um, they put Daddy in the Hall of Fame. Carrie Von Eric. If people are listening, you don't know him. Um, and so I kind of saw what they were doing. It was different than all the other wrestling federations I had gone to. It was very uh, much an old school sportatorium, cool way of doing wrestling again. It felt like it was back, honestly. Cool. I was actually interested in watching it for the first time since ever. Um, and since I was a little girl, like it really felt, I mean, if you've been to an SWE Fury match there, it's as real as it gets. Um, I feel bad for those guys a lot. And backstage when they're done, like they are beat up and they just do it right. It's not like a big show voting production. It's, it's like genuine, good Texas in your face kind of wrestling. Um, and so when I found out that one of their um, shareholders wanted to be bought out, um, I decided to do it because um, I really wanted to help develop this. I feel like, you know, WWE has gotten um, really big kind of production Broadway. Um, and I'm like, I, let's bring actual real wrestling back. Um, talk to my cousins, Ross and Marshall. They're going to be coming and joining me. So all the Von Erics will be back together. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So we we as a family are going to do something really big. Um, then I, I, I implemented Kids Camp because I felt like the generations of watching wrestling kept getting older and older. Yeah. Um, and it's, no, we got to go back. We got to get these kids. We got to get their memories. Um, and everything instilled with SWE or pro wrestling again. Um, so I started a kids camp and for the first show I went to with SWE, there was probably 10 kids there on their phone. They all said, no, they didn't want to be a pro wrestler. And then the first kids camp I did, I had 70 kids there. They all wanted to do it. Um, what's a kids make... camp like kids learning to wrestle? Like, is that what, no, you're so what it is, is, you know, it's wrestling or pro wrestling kids camp, right? 
so they get their face painted. They get to dress up like the wrestlers. They get to shoot promo videos. They get to um, have their own eight by pins. Um, and then Charlie Haas or another wrestler will teach them a couple like fun moves. Okay. Um, and then they get their own kids camp section um, at the uh, camp too. We kind of educate them on all of our fun wrestlers and they get to make signs for their favorite one. Um, and so at the show, they have their own section. They hold up their sign and they are going nuts. Like they, they huh. are educated on who the wrestlers are. They become quick fans that day at kids camp for three hours. Yeah. Um, and then we have them start the show. I put them all backstage and have them walk out and get in the ring at the beginning of the show. So it really instills that like memory that they'll never forget. And that's how we're going to build this next generation of wrestlers. Um, and it's definitely blowing up. I'm partnering up with Big Brother, Big Sisters. We're having the bigs and littles come out. I've been at the board of directors and helping chair events here in California for 14 years. So now I am um, talking with Big Brother, Big Sisters out in Texas. And some of the littles and bigs and stuff will be at the camp in Irving on August 28th for this next show. So we're really excited to see some of these underprivileged kids that wouldn't normally be able to do something like this. Um, be able to come at a um, hopefully free um, going forward. We're, we're trying to do kind of a GoFundMe um, so that underprivileged kids that wouldn't be able to afford it um, will be able to come, um, even if it's with their parents. A lot of times you're with big brother, big sisters because your parents aren't around um, and they want you to have some sort of mentor or somebody there for you. So if they come with their parents, it's, some, it's another bonding experience that normally they wouldn't get with them um, because they work a lot or they're single parents or what have you. So, yeah, we're really excited. It's a really cool experience so far. That's awesome. And, like, community outreach is such a big part of growing a brand, right, and growing a, comp a company and creating those new fans and, like, stuff like that. I've seen these SWE shows, and y'all draw really great houses, like some really big crowds I've seen down at SWE. Yeah. Like, yes. how... It's how just big, a more rowdy crowd now with me with all the kids. I love it. So, like, how big do you want to grow this thing, Lacey? Like, what are your goals for SWE? What are what are some big picture things that you want to do with the company? Honestly, um, being retro, um, sticking with the old school style of things, um, building out our kids' camp so that um, you know we're building that generation, and then. You know, once we're selling out, we just do a little bigger. And when we sell out there, we'll do a little bigger. Um, I mean, I have a lot of really big ideas that are out of the box for pro wrestling. Um, you know, like some Vegas shows and stuff I can't even talk about because other wrestling federations would totally do it if they heard. Got um, it. And I'm sure they'll copy me as soon as it happens. But um, a lot of big things are about to happen. Um, I have a lot of really cool friends out here in California that I've developed over the last 15 years that I've lived here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when I get with them, they don't know what wrestling is, but they have a lot of good business sense. You know, they're billionaires or this or that, and they want to help. Um, so I'm really excited to see what these amazing connections that I've built over the years are going to help do for us. So it's not just me. I have an army of, you know, friends and connections that all have ideas. And um, I have friends that own stadiums in Texas that hold 10,000 people. So yeah. those are definitely goals that we fill up one day. So you see yourself outside. Of, I mean, I heard Vegas. I hear California. So you see, S I mean, SWE has really been mostly a Texas territory, you know, kind of. Yeah, we're going to Oklahoma. We'll be going to... Um, I don't know. A lot of a lot of places that we're having on the schedule next year won't be in Texas. Okay, but gotcha. there'll be fun places for Texans to go to or visit. I mean, who doesn't want to go to Vegas? Um, sure. Because the rodeos and stuff. You know, when they're in Vegas, they're just packed full of Texas people. So maybe we'll try to do it when the rodeos are in town, so they're already there. <laughs> so you talk about your friends that have taken interest and in, like want to help out and stuff. H has has having more competition in a healthier pro wrestling scene, like AEW coming in and seeing that you can have like different companies outside of WWE succeed, has that helped you find momentum as you try to grow your own thing? Do you feel like there? I honestly don't feel any kind of competition. I don't think anyone's doing what we're doing. I think that they're all trying to be WWE wannabes. And SWE is absolutely a different company. We are back to the basics. We're back to when granddad started WCCW and did all that, you know, you, these guys are so genuine. They're so cool. I feel like 
we really hear our wrestlers you know when they have ideas and when they want to do something really cool something that's going to make headlines we're a yes company um and so i i think that if you watch aew and then you watch swe you're getting something different out of both of them you know sure. so definitely feel like you should watch all i mean i support all the wrestling federations why not i think we should all be a team i think that we should get together and do events together Sure. Um, I don't think that anyone should be competition. We should plan our dates around each other in cities. Like, I wish we could all come together as a community and put everybody build each other up as opposed to thinking of each other as competition. Yeah. And, and you know, one of the things, obviously, you, you brought up uh, Ross and Marshall, your cousins there coming in, getting the whole family back together. Yeah. I, they're they're pillars uh, over at MLW at this point that are, you know, the company builds around. Could you see like any kind of MLW SWE relationship? Is that something you'd be interested? Or? I'm just interested in my cousins at this point. I think that they're they're a little annoyed that I want them. Um, they're like, I'm sorry, my cousin bought the Federation. What are we supposed to do? We're going over to be with her. Um, and I just hope that they are willing to work with us as opposed to against us. Cause you know, I want to give my cousins the most work that they can get. Um, so at all the federations, if they can, so if they're willing to share, <laughs> yeah. then I am too. I mean, our show is going to be different, um, than theirs is. So I, uh, to me again, they're just, it's not a competition. I feel like we should all build each other up and we can all have all the wrestlers, you know, it's going to be different storylines going to be this and that. I absolutely think when you have a title at MLW or AEW, we sure. should be competing for those titles on each other's shows. I don't know why they don't do that. I'm really hoping to start that in some sort of capacity. It would be cool if SWE held an MLW belt and vice versa. Sure. Um, and start that rivalry and start that um, competition on stage. And I, I think that would be really cool. Well, MLW has got the, the Vice TV deal. I mean, are you is a national kind of weekly television show for SWE? Is that one of the things on your bucket list for the promotion? Yeah, well? we are yeah. definitely going um, on the Internet. So right now we're on so many networks and everything. And it's like, who watches TV anymore? Like, I want to stream. Um I mean, we'll have people in Dallas be at the show and say, where do I watch you? And we're on primetime CW33. That's and what I thought. Like, you guys have affiliates and stuff that you're right. with. So right. So we're on a lot of like, like big networks on the best time slots, yet people don't know where to watch. So to me, that was a big eye opener. And so our next show, we're going to be on Facebook Live um, that you can buy or you can you can wait a while, like a week or two, and it'll be on YouTube, um, our YouTube channel. Um, so, I mean, I just think that people need to be streaming everything right now. I mean, we always have our phone in our hand. If SWE is on, like, let's watch it. Who's yeah. sitting at home looking at their guide anymore? Like, I'm not. Like, I even got rid of cable and my, I have Hulu and Netflix. Like, <laughs> So, I mean, I do want to be on one of the pillar networks something like Hulu or Netflix, as opposed to something like Vice. I don't want people to have to go under their TV or their phones and have to download something else. I yeah. would rather it already be on their phone. They see the commercials and then we're there. So okay. that's our goals for sure. And I definitely have connections at both of those um, networks. So. It is, yeah, it is interesting how none of the major streaming services have really kind of found that connection with a with a wrestling company yet. I think that's something a lot of they will. Okay, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So wait, you're you're a Von Eric promoting in Texas. Is that stressful? Do you get excited by that idea? Like, what is it like for you to kind of be in this position here now? I mean, you know, your grandfather was Fritz Von Eric, who used to run Texas, right? Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I have a really good partner, Tom Leant, who actually was one of daddy's friends. Um, he knows more about our family than I do because, you know, when they all die tragically and you don't exactly want to think about it all the time. Sure. So when people are like, do you remember the match between this guy and this guy? I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, first of all, I was six. Um, yeah. But I know what our family is about. I know where granddad was headed. 
I know what Uncle Kevin wants. I know where my cousin's hearts are. Um, and it's definitely um, a more pure family driven company that I want to, you know, portray because I feel like the cussing and the other things that aren't like, oh, I want to bring my kids to that isn't where I want to go. I want to have charities there. I want my granddad and my dad to be proud of the product that we put out. Um, so definitely with me being the new owner, um, I want to see a more wholesome yet retro cool style of wrestling like it was when I was little. Like there was nobody throwing around F-bombs and stuff when I sure. was a kid. Um, I want it to be where your family's like, oh, SWE's in town. Let's all go as a family and not their grandmother saying, no, you're not going to go watch that. That's violent. That's this. That's that. Um, I want it. I mean, it's obviously going to be violent. Um, but, but in a back to when I was a kid way. So my take on the Von Eric wrestling is definitely going to be portrayed at SWE and something that my family will be proud of. I mean, that's definitely why my cousins wanted to come over when they found out that I was really gearing it toward kids and this and that. They, yeah. That's all they want to do. You know, they go into schools, they do anti-bullying campaigns. Oh, cool. Um, so this is something that they've been wanting to do. So when they knew I was doing it, I think even if I wasn't the owner, if they knew a wrestling federation was going back to something like this, that's who they would be going to. So, I got you. Okay, and 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 your uh, your uncle uh, Kevin there have has he been giving you advice? What does he? Oh feel? yeah, yeah. He's yeah. always texting me that he's proud of me. He loves what I'm doing. He thinks I'm a great role model and things like that. And those are the texts that um, I strive to get from him, um, and I try to live by, you know, every day. So by yeah. going back to Harvard Business School, I want to promote education to the kids. Even it's never too late, even for the parents, um, and you know, just how important it is to be um, a good person and be kind. And um, and I want to do that to my wrestlers, too. I feel like a lot of them have been beaten down by a lot of these wrestling federations. They didn't care. Um, they seem very, you know, bruised sometimes emotionally. And I want to make sure that I'm building up my wrestlers. I'm taking care of them. And I care about them. Um, and I don't feel like a lot of federations feel that way. And I absolutely do. So Nice. Uh you know, Lacey, I wanted to ask you while I had you, you know, this is probably the most high profile thing you've done in like over a decade in pro wrestling. Uh, in pro wrestling. Yes. Yeah. Where, where did you go? Like we saw I owned, you. Uh, I have owned companies. Okay. I actually, I did a lot of high profile profile things. I was, you know, on covers of magazines and things like that, but for my philanthropic uh, ways and for my entrepreneur ways, I was on, you know, um, I owned Westlake Medical Billing. I'm here in Westlake Village now in California. And sure. people know me here for what I've done in the business community. Um, so I definitely felt like I was still, you know, I still did red carpets, but for charities and things like yeah. that. So I wasn't out of a scene. I was out of the wrestling scene. That's and what that was wondering, though. Yeah, that like was because I didn't like these wrestling federations. Honestly, yeah. I didn't want to watch it. Um I wasn't interested. And so, like I said, when I went out and accepted this award for my dad, I was like, this is it. This is what we've been waiting for. I didn't know this was coming back. And now that I do, I definitely want to help take it over and propel it to be where it should be. Um, because it's, it's what I've been waiting for in that world. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Most people probably know you from the TNA run, right? Where you probably yeah. got you had like a little bit of time in WWE. You know, you've had some firsthand experience. You talk about how it's affected other people. Like, what was your time like in WWE? Everybody well, seems to. Well, I took everything with a grain of salt. I was yeah. friends with Dixie Carter at TNA, so I wasn't. And I was. And TNA was very much a family and friend um, like atmosphere, not unlike WWE, where it was very um, catty and. Hmm. disrespectful to each other and it wasn't it wasn't a good environment they'd lie all the time if they thought you were gonna go up like honestly like the 20th lie about me when I got to practice I was like I'm done um I just left I was like I don't they're like you're about to be on tv and I was like I'm good like I don't want to work around this environment and I, honestly I don't think it was the people I think it was 
the environment. Like it was, everybody else was doing it. So somebody that was good would normally want it would too. Um, hmm. Like the Bella twins were some of my best friends. Um, Nicole used to babysit my son and Brie was like my bestie that I went to concerts and did everything with. Um, so I definitely missed them more than anything when I left, but I found the love of my life. Grant, I tried to live a normal life for like five minutes, then TNA called. Uh, and when I saw them, when I met the beautiful people, we became like best friends day one. Yeah. I was like, this is what I want to do. I was actually on my way to the airport, um, with my husband again and now he's dropping me off again. I was going to be gone for days da, da, da. and they were taking me out of the beautiful people, making me a solo and making me the world champ. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't have a big ego. I like to build people up. Um, so I liked being in my little group. I liked being the big dumb one, which was very far from who I am. Yeah. Um, and it was just funny. It was a funny, you know, like character uh, that I thought was fun playing. So when I knew that character was gone and I was going to have to like basically travel, go on the road to these really crappy little towns that just have an Applebee's. I was like, I'm good. And I quit on the way to the airport. Dixie was not happy with me, but we're still friends. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, do what, do what you think is best for you, right? You know? Yeah. You know, and it sounds like you've been having a lot of fun and it sounds like you're about to have a lot more fun here. Get to take the reins of SWE. Uh, so hopefully here as this thing plays out, you know, I'd love to bring you back and maybe talk a little bit more as this experiment kind of plays out for you here. You know, this is very yeah. exciting. Very exciting endeavor right now, Lacey. So where can people go to support you, support SWE, all those things right now? Well, you can go to SWEFury.com um, and it shows you kind of our YouTube page, um, our Facebook that we're always posting on. Um or Lacey uh, Dash Von Eric for Instagram that I post on um, now and then. I need to get better at social media. Like I said, I was in the business corporate world and social media was not on my forefront whatsoever. I'm actually about to get a social media team to come in and help me because I'm so bad at it. Um, it's I'm hard. very much my granddad's granddaughter. I was born and raised on his farm um, with Ross and Marshall and Jill and Kristen and Uncle Kevin. Um, and we had one little TV with like the knob that went doot, 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 and no electronics really. We played outside the whole time. So I like putting this thing away, um, for days and now owning this, everyone's like, no, you can't do that. You need to post. And so it's been a difficult process for me to get into social media, but I'm going to have some people help me and put me in that mindset and I like to be here. Like I live in a beautiful town. I have beautiful kids. I have a wonderful husband and I'm a very present person. So posting and putting things on social media, just I'm really bad at it, but I'm getting better. So <laughs> look me up on Facebook, um, on SWE Fury's Facebook and I will try. I'm going to try. Fair enough. Or you could go to Cameo. I love doing those. They're like my favorite thing. People ask me to say congratulations or some funny thing to their friend. And then they their friend gets them back by I have to say something funny to their friend back. And I'm having a really good time on Cameo. So if y'all ever want me to do it, I will do it. I love it. <laughs> cool.